It's Minion Feuds this week on Movie Feuds. As I battle, okay. Minion Feuds, who wrote this one? We're two seconds into the show and the writing's already abysmal. Chast, was it you? Classic Chast. All right, it's Despicable Me Too versus Cloudy with a Chance and Meatballs 2. Chast, you're fired. Leading things off is none other than Steve Carell reprising his role as Gru. Joining him is a new love interest by the name of Lucy. She's voiced by Kristen Wiig and she works for the anti-villain agency. These two serve their purpose, but Gru always came off to me as a poor man's Dr. Evil. That's an Austin Powers character for those of you that are eight and watching this. The real reason to watch this though is for the crazy shenanigans the minions get into. The writers also knew this and that's why they're front and center this time around. A lot of the plot, a lot of the story revolves around these little f***ers. Sorry, I was gonna try not to swear because kids could be watching. That's not my fault. You know what, parents, do your job. Don't let your six-year-old kid watch a show about two cartoons being reviewed by, okay, I can see how this could be my fault. Benjamin Bratt voices the villain, Eduardo, or better known as El Macho. What is, that, what is happening right now? Where is this coming from? Some of the SNL cast members lend their voices to Claudio the Chance of Meatballs 2, with Bill Hader reprising his role as Flint Lockwood. I've said reprising twice in this episode. I don't think anybody cares, though. You've seen the shit that's on YouTube. This is pretty high quality compared to the rest, right? <laughs> right? Anchovy poster boy Baby Brent's back again in chicken costume for some of the time. He's voiced by Andy Samberg. Steve Kahn gets a little bit larger of a role this time as Flint Lockwood's dad. And it actually just occurred to me that Steve the Monkey is voiced by Neil Patrick Harris. This movie just went up a notch. Anytime NPH is involved, you're gonna get my attention. We can't forget Sam Sparks, voiced by Anna Ferris. And although Mr. T didn't come back as the cop, we got Terry Crews. That's better. I think it's better. Will Forte plays our villain, not Steve Jobs. It's Steve Jobs. R.I.P. As far as casts go, it's pretty hard to beat the minions, although Cloudy 2 gives them a run for their money with their creative animals, their foodimals. There's little marshmallow babies, an over-the-top cute strawberry that follows Sam everywhere. She carries him in a little backpack, a little backpack snack. Seriously? A little back snack. Snack pack. Back snack pack. Is it, you writing this down? Oh no, snack pack's a thing? Of course it is. And of course there's the infamous. Taco dial supreme. Let's just go with the tie here. Can we go with the tie? Yeah, I think we can. I think we will. Personally, I think Cloudy 2 has the more creative storyline. Flint Lockwood's creation from the first flick, the Flintsta Fluka Flicka Blah Blah, has run amok and it's creating food animal hybrids. What I like about it is it's not just a rehash of the first natural disaster angle. Instead, it takes a fresh, pun, approach by going with monster flicks, which of course leads to a lot of great food puns. And if there's one thing I like more than anything else in the world, it's a good food pun. I'll let you relish on that thought. Now don't let my positivity sway away from Despicable Me 2 just yet, because there's a fun story there as well. Since the whole moon fiasco from the first flick, Gru has turned a new leap. He's in the jam making business now. He's a jammer. Unfortunately, an Arctic base goes missing, and they need Gru's help to find out the mystery man behind the scenes. I think Gru's a bit more fun as a villain, but I suppose it's good he's setting an example for his children. Worst case scenario, he starts a stupid YouTube show about kids' movies. He talks about them, looks at all the negative comments and low subscription, spirals downhill in a sad depression. Darkness fills his life. No friends, no family, no love. All he has is his camera and his winning personality. It's not gonna get him very far though, folks, because the views are dwindling. All hope is lost. Nothing's left. What am I talking about right now? Oh yes, Movie Feuds, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> the evil minion reveal at the end is a nice twist, although it goes by a bit too fast. Wouldn't have minded seeing these guys tear up the city a bit. 
I will give Despicable Me two major props on the villain though, El Macho. Again, why, what, where, how? He died with style, there is no denying that. Taken off chained with a shark and explosives into a volcano? That's how I want to go. That's definitely how I want to go. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. These are pretty films, that's plain and simple. Vibrant color palettes, glossy overall feel to them. They, they shine, they're bright. I love them. I love this. This is what happens when I just bullshit. Cloudy 2 has a bit more of a spastic approach to its animation style. Reminds me a bit about Madagascar at times, but it's fun. They jump, cut, all over the place, doing funny looking poses. Piece of cake. Mm. A lot of good action here. In Cloudy 2, we have a ton of inventions and frantic events take place all over at Flynn's new job. We get to see quick battles with various food animals, like the double bacon cheese spider, and the final fight with Chester V showcases a lot of our food friends. Despicable Me 2 contains a lot of good gadgets. Let's not forget the lipstick taser. In fact, let's not forget that entire sequence where they kidnap Gru, throw him in the trunk, the minions are chasing after him. I love that. I just love it. Kidnapping is one of my favorite things. Find an Oprah's type book, Adam's 10 favorite things, kidnapping's for sure on there. One or two spot. You get a battle with a chicken. What's not to love? And of course, a great final showdown with El Macho himself. I don't even know. I don't even know. Music's nothing to write home about. They're both good, but nothing comes close to like a Frozen. There's no super addictive song that stays in your head. I've tasked myself to mention Frozen in all my new episodes in the hopes that it will skyrocket all my views to a million by just simple association. Despicable Me has the standard secret agent type of score, while Cloudy the Chance of Meatballs matches its quirkiness with uplifting, feel goodery type jams like La Di D. This is possibly the closest feud I've ever done for me personally. I enjoy both these films quite a bit, and they're very equal across all categories. Since I do have to pick a film by law, I'm gonna go with Despicable Me 2, and it hurts. Despicable Me 2 is a fun and fast ride from beginning to end, and even though the mesquite toast and baby marshmallows are amazing creations, you just can't beat a good minion. I'm a curious little cabbage to hear your thoughts though. Bank them in the comments below. And remember to subscribe because you take pity on me. Just do it, Nike. Just, just make the jump. Make the plunge, if, if you must. More than just reviews, this is Minion Feuds. Now I'm doing it accidentally. Chast, he's still here? No? Good. I, I meant it. He's, he's out. He's fired. <laughs>